you're about to take a complete practice test for the new TOEFL speaking. If you haven't heard, the TOEFL IBT has changed. On July 26, 2023, there are changes to the writing and reading section and a little bit of listening as well. But speaking really hasn't changed at all. So it's a new test, but speaking is pretty much the same exact thing as it's been since 2019. So there's no meaningful changes, but these are some new questions haven't put on YouTube before. So hope you guys find this helpful. A couple of notes really quickly before we get started. Get ready to record your voice. It's really, really helpful to listen back to your speaking. You know, it's hard to remember what you say and how you say it in the moment. Really, I know you hate the sound of your own voice, but get used to it. It'll be really helpful. Uh, you can also download our speaking templates and grading rubrics, and I'll put a link in that so you can grade yourself if you want. I'll also put a link to a website called My Speaking Score, which gives you feedback on your speaking. Uh, I will also give you sample responses. After the end, at the end of the test, you can hear some sample responses to these questions as well, so you can get an idea of how you should respond. And yeah, again, you could download the PDF if you want the text version of this, link in the description to the test so you can have a file on your computer all the time. That's totally fine. So I'll put a link to that. And the last thing is to check out the speaking study plan. This is for my own site, Speaker English. So this is a, a kind of side project. I usually always talk about TST prep, but uh, Speaker English, I've made study plans for TOEFL speaking in particular. Uh, that is 30 to 90 days. And basically you have a plan, you know what to do every day, one question every day. Uh, the, what makes this unique and different is that it's not a course with just videos. You know, it's not a meeting with a teacher. What it is is that it's something that you have every day that can help you improve your speaking. This is for students who have taken the test before and haven't gotten their speaking score. If you, if you haven't taken the test yet, I don't think it's a good fit for you. So just keep that in mind. It's for people who are struggling with the speaking really. Okay, it's designed to help you improve your overall speaking abilities. But anyway, let me get back to the test, sorry. So let's get back to the TOEFL speaking test. It's about to start. Good luck everybody and I will see you at the end. Directions. You will now be asked a question about a familiar topic. After you hear the question, you will have 15 seconds to plan your response and 45 seconds to speak. Do you agree or disagree with the following statement? Video games have a positive impact on children. Provide reasons and examples to support your stance. You have 15 seconds to prepare your response. You may begin preparing now. You now have 45 seconds to speak. You may begin speaking now. Directions. You will now read a short passage and then listen to a conversation on the same topic. You will then be asked a question about the passages. After you hear the question, you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. You have 45 seconds to read the passage below. You may begin reading now.
Now listen to a conversation about the same topic. Hi, Jenny. You must be pretty pleased to hear about Coach Jepson's new role, right? Actually, my feelings are completely the opposite. I was really disappointed when I heard the news. But aren't you on the volleyball team? Yeah, and that's why I'm upset. We've got a good team, and I thought we could win the championship next year. But now, I'm doubtful. I've looked into Coach Jepson's experience, and she's worked as either a soccer coach or a softball coach for her whole career. Ah, I see. You worry that she might not know enough about volleyball. Right. I'm sure she'll learn, but I don't know how quickly. And until she does, I'm concerned she won't have the knowledge required to help the team win more games. I see your point. And I think the college doesn't really understand how much Coach Smith supported us off the court. Coach Smith? You mean the current coach? Yeah. They mentioned that Coach Jemson's players have an excellent GPA. But so do we. Coach Smith always made time for us after practice if we needed any help in our classes. On top of that, if any of our GPAs dropped below a certain number, we wouldn't be allowed to play. I'm sure Miss Jepson is nice, but so was Coach Smith. I really don't think the team's GPA is that low. Well, either way, looks like you all have a new coach. Now, answer the question. The woman expresses her opinion about the situation described in the announcement. State her opinion and explain the reason she gives for holding that opinion. You have 30 seconds to prepare your response. You may begin preparing now. You now have 60 seconds to speak. You may begin speaking now. Directions. You will now read a short passage and then listen to a lecture on the same topic. You will then be asked a question about the passages. After you hear the question, you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. You have 45 seconds to read the passage below. You may begin reading now. Now listen to a lecture about this topic in a psychology class. So, as was already mentioned in the reading, the yips is most commonly associated with sports and some of the best examples come from baseball. 
Bill Blass was an all-star baseball player in the 1960s and early 1970s. In 1973, however, Blass suddenly lost his previous pitching abilities. One day, without warning, he just couldn't pitch the way he used to. You see, in the past, Blass would just pitch. He had a considerable amount of training leading up to the time he became a professional baseball player, which was mainly stored in his unconscious mind. But once he became aware of the complicated motions associated with throwing a baseball, he was no longer able to perform at a high level. His career went to decline, and sadly, he was never able to overcome this problem. But the yips aren't always fatal to an athlete's career. Another baseball player, Steve Sachs, started to suffer from a similar deterioration of basic baseball mechanics in the 1983 season. After a single bad throw in a game, Sachs began to question his throwing ability and fear started to cloud his judgment. He committed error after error while throwing to first base. However, Sachs worked with a psychologist to help identify the fears which were getting in the way of his performance. It was through Sachs's ability to identify his fears and notice them while he played that helped him return to his normal playing form. He played for another 13 years after that without experiencing the same problems. Now, answer the question. Using the examples of Bill Blass and Steve Sachs from the lecture, describe what the yips is. You have 30 seconds to prepare your response. You may begin preparing now. You now have 60 seconds to speak. You can begin speaking now. Directions. You will now listen to part of a lecture. You will then be asked a question about it. After you hear the question, you will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Now listen to part of a lecture in a history class. Well, today we are going to talk about the Industrial Revolution. This major shift in the economy caused massive numbers of people to seek work in factories which didn't exist before then. Even though industrialization certainly shaped the society that we all live in and enjoy today, there were some very negative side effects that have also had a lasting impact. To start, cities are densely populated today because of the Industrial Revolution. Before factories sprouted up in cities, people were happy to live in rural areas in tight-knit families within small, local communities. According to some estimates, Urban populations increased by up to 40% during the onset of industrialization. The rural landscape was soon abandoned by families that may have lived there for generations. The promise of easy jobs and high wages appealed to younger people who wanted to see more of the world, and even to families who were tired of relying on the weather and a favorable crop season for food. Since then, it has remained increasingly difficult for farms to remain tended and small towns to remain populated. 
Besides the extensive migration out of the countryside and into heavily populated and increasingly dangerous cities, the Industrial Revolution also marked the beginning of humanity's contribution to the destruction of the Earth's natural environment. Rapidly growing industries not only required an increased amount of labor, but also energy. Coal was burnt, and harmful emissions were let out into the atmosphere with almost no consideration of how these fumes might negatively impact the Earth. Factories even began releasing their waste into reservoirs, rivers, and other natural areas. So, in short, industrialization was the first time we human beings became a major contributor to the contamination of our planet. Now, answer the question. Using points and examples from the talk, explain two effects of the Industrial Revolution. You have 20 seconds to prepare your response. You may begin preparing now. You now have 60 seconds to speak. You may begin speaking now. Personally speaking, I definitely think that video games offer more benefits than drawbacks for children. I remember when I was a child, almost 30 years ago now, and we were the first generation to play a computer game in school called the Oregon Trail. Not only did we enjoy competing against each other, but we also learned about American history in an interesting and engaging way. On top of that, most children are surrounded by video games, so they're impossible to avoid. For example, tablets, phones, and computers all have different games, and many of them are not only entertaining, but educational. That's why I totally agree that video games are more beneficial than harmful for children. The university has announced that Coach Jepsen will start coaching the women's volleyball team next semester. The woman in the listening passage is not crazy about this idea. First of all, the announcement states that because Miss Jepson has been a successful softball coach, she can also help the volleyball team. However, the woman points out that she doesn't have any experience coaching volleyball, so she is doubtful about their chances of winning next year. Secondly, even though Miss Jepson may help students improve their GPA, so does Coach Smith the current volleyball coach. The woman in the conversation points out that Coach Smith always makes time to help her players with their studies and doesn't even allow them to play if their GPA falls below a certain grade. These are the reasons why the woman is really unhappy with this change. I had never heard of the yips before, but I found it to be quite interesting. It's this psychological phenomenon that causes a professional athlete to lose the physical skills needed to perform the sport they play. The lecturer gives some great examples of the yips in baseball. One is Bill Blass, a famous pitcher who suddenly lost his ability to throw well in the 1970s. Once he became conscious of the motions required to pitch, he could no longer perform and, unfortunately, 
His career soon ended after that. Another baseball player with the Yips was Steve Sachs. After one bad game, he started to let fear get in the way of his throwing ability. Luckily, Sachs worked with a psychologist to overcome his fear and continue to play for another 13 years. And so, this is how the professor explains the idea of the yips. In the lecture, the professor discusses the Industrial Revolution, which was a drastic change in the economy that caused massive numbers of people to seek jobs in factories. In particular, he describes two of the negative side effects of industrialization. One drawback of the Industrial Revolution was urbanization. When people realized they could easily find work in a factory, they moved to cities and abandoned the rural way of life. Unfortunately, this has made it difficult for farms to survive and for small towns to remain populated. Another downside of industrialization was, and still is, the environmental effects. At first, the growing industries meant that a lot of coal had to be burned for energy, and this released harmful emissions into the atmosphere. Also, factories polluted reservoirs and rivers with their wastes. So, as you can see, these are two very negative side effects of the Industrial Revolution. Alright, congrats, you made it! If you're still a little confused about the TOEFL speaking and what you need to do to improve, check out this video here where I go over some sample answers to each question type so you have a better idea of what kind of score you can expect and also how you can answer these questions better. And that's it. Good luck, everybody, and I will see you next time.